Welcome to the Arabesque Scissors YouTube channel. I'm Ali Phillips and in this video I'm going to take you through how to make these really cute little fabric swatches. Now why would you want to keep a record of your fabric? Well if you're like me and you find yourself coming back to favourite fabrics again and again and having a record of the name and any other little relevant details that are important to you can be a really great way of keeping track of what you've got. And if you're a shop that takes custom orders, then having all your fabrics available that your customers can choose from just on a little piece of card can be a great time saver so that they can order what they need. But my favourite way of using a fabric swatch is when I'm doing a fabric pull for a new design. It's really great to just be able to pull out a few little cards like this and audition a bunch of fabric together without having to mess up my stash. So if you love organisational videos like this, I'd love you to give this video a like and click that subscribe button so that you don't miss out on any more of my content. So if you would like to make some of these, then you can find the link for the free printable template available in the description below. So to get started on this, you're going to need your uh, sheet of swatches and they need to be printed out on cardstock. And I've got mine on uh, reasonably heavyweight cardstock here. This is probably about 350 grams. Um, you're going to need a old cutting mat. Uh, you certainly aren't going to want to use your good cutting mat that you cut fabric on uh, because uh, when you're using a craft knife, which you will also need, this cuts quite deep rivets in the mat. So you want to make sure you've got something old that you don't mind actually ruining a little bit. And you're definitely going to need a metal ruler um, because if you try and use a quilting ruler for this you'll actually shave pieces off the side. So when you have a look at your cardstock here you'll see that you've actually got some cut marks along the corners here and these are here so that you can cut these out uh, nice and accurately and have all of them turn out uh, to be exactly the same. Start just by lining up any two of these marks. So I'm going to start lining up this top mark and this bottom mark. And you can choose uh, to do exactly on the mark or just off it. But try and be um, as consistent as you can. So I'm not going to cut right through. I'm actually going to start just above this mark here. And just very carefully move your hand down as you go and then you might need to do this again just depending on how hard that you've actually pressed make sure you're keeping a good downward pressure so that the knife isn't going to jump over the side of the ruler And then you can just have a little check and just see without moving the ruler whether you've gone through and that has nicely gone through. And I'm going to just move on to the next set of marks. I'm going to line these up just on the inside of the marks again. If you're wanting to be 100% accurate then you would just uh, flip this around. Um, and so that you're consistently going to be on the opposite side of each of the marks but um, it's really not going to matter a massive amount so just slowly and carefully pull your knife down moving your hand down to keep the ruler in place and you can run it down again a second time just to double check that you've gone right through and I can feel that that's gone right through. So just keep cutting your way across. Okay, so now we've got all four of these channels cut, so I'm just going to Turn it 90 degrees and then start cutting 
matching up these lines and you'll start seeing your cards pop out which is really quite satisfying. And now if you've cut everything through, you should be able to lift this off and take out your cards, separate them and you'll have some really beautiful, sweet looking cards. And that is actually looks pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and punch uh, the little hole in each of these cards so that we can actually thread um, either a ribbon through it or um, a little jump ring so that you can link all these together. And then I'll show you how to put the swatch on the front. So now that we've got the swatch cards cut out, uh, we need to prepare the fabric that we're going to stick on the front. So you're going to need your iron and a pressing mat. Um, I like to have some starch, a ruler, uh, a rotary cutter. I've got some scissors just to cut out the first part of the fabric roughly. I have some pinking shears here because I would like a couple of the edges of each of my swatches to be pinked and I have just an ordinary school glue stick here uh, for gluing the fabric to the front of the card. And finally we need some fabric. So I have a very sweet bundle of Liberty fabrics here kindly supplied to me by Alice Caroline Fabrics in England. I'm going to start by cutting out a rough piece from these and moving on from there. So now I've got my swatches all cut out here. I'm just going to go ahead and give them each a press and I'm also going to spray them with a good amount of starch. which just makes them easier to handle. Um, makes them a lot stiffer, obviously. But when you're pinking with the pinking shears, just makes it um, a lot easier to cut an accurate edge when you're not sort of dealing with a floppy piece of fabric. So that's a lot. So I've just gone ahead here and stacked up my fabrics in a couple of different stacks. So I've got three uh, stacked here and go ahead and cut your square to fit this exactly. Or you can leave a little bit of a, a border around it, cut it a little bit smaller, it's up to you. Um, you might want to have a bigger swatch. So I'm just going to start still by cutting mine a little bit oversized because I'm going to leave a little bit here on the edges so that I can use my pinking shears to cut this down to size. So I'm just going to trim it up on all four edges. I'm going to cut this size, this side here, I'm going to trim to 2 and 5 eighths. But just for uh, the time being, I'm actually going to cut this to 3 inches. Okay, and then with my fabric pen, I'm 
just going to uh, work out how much I can cut off each side here so that I can get my two and five eighths here along here. And I'm just going to rule a line along each of these pieces of fabric here. Okay, so now you're just going to grab your pinking shears and then just choose either the outside of this line or the inside to try and cut all the way along. If you can't cut all the way down, open your scissors right up again and then line up your pinks so that the, the template of these triangular shapes here are exactly lining up and then you can cut all the way across. Just flip this around and repeat along this other side. I think my vintage scissors are perhaps a trifle blunt, but that's okay. So let's just have a little test run here. I'm pretty happy with that. I think I will glue it this way. So that's going to look really cute once we've glued that in there. So just go ahead and trim up all your pieces to fit here. So now all that's left is to grab your glue stick and a swatch and we're going to glue this into the centre of the card here so I'd like to just start by putting a smear just roughly in the middle, you, need, you can you do a fair bit, centering that and then for these corners and edges just go ahead and wipe wipe a piece of glue just on each corner. Just work your way around. Until you've got all four of them nicely stuck down. And then keep on gluing. And now all you need to do is fill in your swatch with the name of the fabric and any other relevant details that you'd like to include.